So we're back. Here we are today. So the end of the last video, this exhaust was a pain in my butt. I, I just couldn't get it out. I was jacking the engine up, turning it, lifting at different angles. I had to like turn the exhaust this way, just pivot it a little bit when the bolt top bolt here was caught just to catch this other top bolt. So now we're gonna do these three at the bottom. Can't really show you, but you know what it's like. There's three of them back there. So let me go ahead and catch those. I'll do one and then uh, I'll stop the video. So you just, just use my mirror to find the hole. Okay, so then uh, what I wanna do is, uh, just to let you know, the head gasket's not bolted down yet. I kept it loose to help me line up things. I don't really need to do it that way, but I just did it that way anyway, I don't have it. So I'm gonna put some copper anti-seize on stuff. So here we go. You're gonna do the same thing for all the bolts you put in. Sounds like I have a demonetizing soundtrack to life. So. There you go. Okay, cool. So catch all three. So the torque specs for these, all five of these is gonna be uh, 44 Newton meters. So I got my little short one inch extension, 14 millimeter socket. And, uh, we're gonna go 44 Newton meters, which is approximately, I think it's like 33 foot pounds. I think it's 33 or 34 foot pounds. So it's hard to, to torque because of the, uh, the limited range. That's that. Cool, do that for all five, okay? So this is the bolt for the uh, exhaust bracket. And, uh, the one that I had to use the uh, induction heater to, to get off. So we gotta get, um, give us a fighting chance putting this back in. And I mean, it looks pretty dismal. We gotta kinda clean these threads up a little bit. We got my safety glasses on. <laughs> all right, so that is our bolt right here that we're trying to get at. You see it? Right there. So we need to get a 14 millimeter into there. Right, so we got our 14 millimeter here. Put some copper anti-seize on it. <laughs> Can't do it with you attached to me by the hip, but you get the point. Well, that's the killer combo right here to get to that uh, bolt. We want to kind of uh, prevent any side of like, prevent any s kind of hydraulic uh, pressure building up into cylinder head bolts. So we got to make sure, I did this already before I put the cylinder head on, but I didn't show you, but I'm going to do it again because uh, I'm a little paranoid. So all the bolts are in, right? They're not screwed in, they're just placed in position. So we're going to go like this. We pull one out, right? Put your safety glasses on. Your blow gun, right? And you're gonna go blow down in that hole and get all the fluids out of there if there's any. So there's none. So there's no debris and there's no fluids because I already did that. I just wanted to show you. I'm gonna do that again for the other nine and I'll bring it. One more thing I do these one at a time, you know, don't take them all out so that way you don't lose the position for the the bolt and also you don't want any debris or moisture to get into the passage down there you know so same thing again wash rinse and repeat All right, so finally we're gonna get to torque these down it's been a it's been a bit a long journey all right so we got our motor oil here right we're gonna go like this just get a little bit of that on the threads, like that. Sorry, like that. And we're gonna get a little bit under the head of the bolt right here, like that. 
drop that back down. Right. We'll do that all 10 times, just a little bit here. Back here, a little bit under, like that. Drop that back down. Right. We'll do that for all 10 of them. You want to get these started by hand. So I already did these, so I'm just doing these four so you can see. Alright, good. Double check. Okay, great. So they're all done by hand. Alright, so we're gonna. First pass is going to be 20, new 20 newton meters. Then we're going to get to the final, which is uh, 39 newton meters. And then we're going to do two 90 degree turns. Okay? And the order goes like this. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right. So first round is going to be twenty newton meters. This is a little tricky because you want to get a least amount of extensions and stuff involved, right? The issue is. I didn't have a half inch extension that can clear the uh, the tubes, so I had to do a bunch of adapters, right? So I have a half inch 14 millimeter 12 point socket, 3 8 drive adapter to half inch, and then a one inch adapter. So not ideal. In a perfect world, you would just have a three inch or five inch half inch adapter okay but let's do what we got let's do what we do what we can okay so we're gonna go the first one 20 newton meters that's 20 right then we're gonna go to position number two which is right here we do 20 newton meters also and continue like I showed you the pattern, all right? I'll bring you back when we start the round two. Now we're gonna go to 39 Newton meters. Same thing. One. Two. Let's see where three and four is. Is here. Four. Get a good sweep. There's five. Okay. So my neighbor is uh, doing some brake work, right? And he's uh, got his car jacked up with no jack stand. And then his jack is like halfway on the edge of the sidewalk, just hanging out. Oh my god, like. Uh, I walked over there and I told him you should get a jack stand. But that's the problem. You can't make a man do anything they don't want to do, right? And uh, he's just sitting there with legs underneath. And I'm telling you, that thing is like so dicey. Like I'm feeling like I should just go over there and give him a jack stand temporarily, you know? Just because he's putting himself at risk. And it's unnecessary and it's so preventable. And I'd hate to see him over there with his legs trapped underneath the car, you know? I don't know, it's, it's times like this you just never know what to do because, you know, people are so, particularly men, you know, they're, 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 they are so just pig-headed and, and stubborn. And uh, they think they know everything and they, they just don't want to listen, you know? And then they get themselves in strange pickles like they don't do s stuff like use glasses safety glasses when they're hammering stuff or you know you name it cut in things i don't know you, you get the point 
you can't make a man do anything, you know, but then it's often too late before they figure out what to do or not to do. So we'll leave it at that. So if you look here, you can see on top of the bolts, a little white mark, right? Just halfway up, halfway and up. And I'm going to use that marked mark to calculate what's 90 and 180 degrees. So I'm going to do first pass 90 degrees, second pass another 90 degrees. So all together, all these lines will be facing this way when I'm done. So we're going to go 90 degrees, this third pass. So that ended well, right? So you can see the white paint marks. See this is still up. That's halfway there. That's also halfway. So that's how you can kind of keep track of your angles. See? So there you go. These are not done yet. So that's what they look like when we're done. They'll be all the way around. So I'm really happy that that ended well. I'm still working on this car. Anyway, um, you know, it's uh, in, in, in Alejandro's defense, he's Indonesian by the way. He just doesn't, he's just a guy that wants to do, you know, fix his car and he just doesn't know any better about safety. So, he's just doing his best, you know what I mean? And it's like, it's one of those things where. the blind leading the blind he just doesn't know any better you know but the thing is he doesn't he's not in a situation he's forced to listen to anybody so also he's also culturally like maybe a little bit uncomfortable you know and does not engage me I might be a threat to him you know the whole like color of my skin crap so all right that's going to be 90 degrees right there if these were new bolts, you'd have to do this three times. But they're not new. So. That's it. That's all you gotta do. Do that eight more times. This is gonna be number eight. Spot for this one's weird. See, everybody's facing the other way now. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and get the uh, exhaust cover back on. It's three bolts, and there are 20, they're 22 newton meters, so we got a... All right, they're 12 millimeters. up top. We're going to put some copper anti-seize on these. <laughs> my uh, my little 3 8 tool extended uh, 3 8 wrench 
broke at the very end. I was like, oh man, that sucks. So. It's made, it was made by Performance Tools. I don't, ever, I don't really recommend it. It's a really terrible tool. But uh, I'll try to get an RMA on it. See if the uh, company will uh, honor, you know, the tool. Wish me good luck with that one. All right, so. These are gonna be 22 Newton meters. It's gonna be 22 Newton meters. This one here it used to be a 12 millimeter, but we forgot to get a new one. So we're gonna put this one at I put this one at the top so we can replace it later. I don't even know what it is anymore. It's like an 11, maybe an 11 and a half. But it's pretty mangled up. I'll show it to you. So corrosion got the best of it. So not much left of that. We have to get another a new one at a later date. Let's make sense of this thing. We gotta put this back into the car. This is the part that I'm like, most like, uh, feeling very like, uh, you know, I'm not too confident about. So we're gonna do this. Yep. This is number three. It goes like that. There's an arrow on it pointing this way. And there's a hole right here for the bolt. So that's how you can tell. So that way you you know, okay, you know, I didn't mess it up. So this is number three. This is also labeled number three. So that we know that's gonna go like that. I can't mess this one, up, this one up either because there's a little groove right there. A little cut out. So that's number five. It's number two. If you go this way, right, if you look straight down, there's a little tiny notch like right here. That notch is to line up with that notch. So that's how you can tell the orientation. And the last one is going to be number one.
I mess that up? Hmm. I got a review, I remember. And that should be it. We should be able to kind of double check the orientation of things. So. going to be a pain in the butt to drop down. You can see it already. Oh yeah, that's going to be difficult. Alright, so we're going to have to kind of like pull them up, you know what I mean? We'll zip tie them up. Yeah. Alright, let's just... Before you drop this in, you want to turn these right to where they were for top dead center on the compression stroke for cylinder one. Remember the marks? So these two are up. The white marks, so you have the arrow or the two dots. They're facing at the very top. And then you have uh, these two facing directly across from each other. So that's what they need to be like. And then we're going to drop them in. So you want to give this a little bit of a cleaning before you put it on. So we're going to put a little bit of uh, RTV on here, and we're going to use uh, we're going to use the old Honda Bond number four. So this board had, remember the bolts that we put, we had them in the right order. So we took all these bolts back out and placed them in position. So now they're all here. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten that down. All right, so at this point, I got the timing marks all set up. We have uh, the, uh, the two arrows pointing this way, arrows pointing out. I didn't really have to worry about this side. I was mostly worried about this side. The chain, I use the chain because the chain has colors on it to help you line it up. So now it's all lined up. I'm just gonna like, just kind of like screw these down lightly. I don't want to go uh, too crazy. I'm gonna torque these down later. So we're not using this to tighten it. We're just using it just to get them settled. So now everything is in place, right? We're gonna go ahead and uh, start the torquing pro process. So what I did, I got these two adjustables, put them on the uh, intake and the exhaust camshaft. And then I, I do that because it holds it in place so that they move as one piece. Small problem. So we gotta get the uh, the other ones that we had earlier on to try to hold, this, hold these together, remember? Well, they need to be also removed, but they're now they're now they're inaccessible. So I gotta I gotta fight with them a little bit, but I'll do it off camera. Just cut off all the zip ties, all right? So there's an order to this. I'll flash it on the screen for you so you can see it. But that's the order we're gonna use to uh, torque this down. So these are gonna be uh, 22 millimeters, the 12 12 volts. The 12 millimeter bolts are, are 22 newton meters. These two right here on the outside are, um, are 10 millimeter bolts and they are uh, 12 newton meters. OK, 
keep going till you're finished. Let's save the last so we can do it together. Right, so we're on uh, 17. It's gonna be 22 newton meters. Two 10 millimeters over here, and these are going to be uh, 12 newton meters. So 12 newton meters. I just want to revisit some time and marks for you. So, this is a new time and cam chain I have, and uh, if you look right here, you can see that line. Right there, that line. So we're top dead center because of the arrows. They line up. So you do you take this single link here, right? And you place it right over where that line, where that sprocket is that lines up with that line behind it, like that. Okay? So the timing for this engine is so easy to get. You can't mess it up. You look right here. You see how uh, these two arrows face each other? So that's what you want. Looks like that. My engine is tilted a little bit this way because the engine mounts out, so it was a little hard to fit to get this to trust myself, but either way. And you have this arrow here is facing up, so is that arrow, but most important is these two arrows are facing each other directly. So they look like that. Okay, let's go over to this side. This is essential. You gotta get two... I had two 23 millimeters, because I thought that's what would fit on this. <sighs> these shafts, but it's not. It's like, it just won't go down. I have no idea why. It's close, but no scholarship. You might want to jump to like 24 millimeters or ASE like 15 sixteenths. 15 sixteenths would be closer than 24. But other than that, I put 20, two 23 millimeters on here to like hold this together so it doesn't keep jumping around because the, the pressure of the spring wants to turn these, you know? Anyway, so over here, right? As long as you have, this is the, easiest part this is what makes things line up as long as you have those two sprockets there see them the, the two colored ones in between the dot over here same thing the two two colored ones Whoa. between the dot like that push that down a little bit all right so I got pretty serious about this Tired of that chain popping off. So just zip tight like that. I'll show you again what you're looking for on this side. It's pretty pretty straightforward how to time this. Like one of the easiest things you'll do. So see how the uh, the two sprocket the two gold sprockets are in between the uh, the dot there same thing on this side and then over here see these two are lined up 
Uh, this one's a little bit, a little bit below. We'll move it. We'll move uh, this one back a little. Yeah. Yeah. So to do that, we can just go like this. Right. And now they're lined up. And then you go down here. If you look under here, right? See that? This is the most important one. If this one's lined up, so we got the brand new front guide in. There's three 10 millimeter bolts. One here, uh, two, and another one up here. Right here. So they're all going to be uh, 12 Newton meters. So we just placed the uh, rear tench, rear guide on, and this weird bolt. Remember that one? That one there. That one's going to be 22 Newton meters. That's 22 Newton meters. All right. So we're talking about this rear tensioner here. This guide here. Going to be 22 newton meters up top for that one weird little bolt. So this tensioner, a little tricky to get on. So I just wanted to show you how to do it. I probably won't be able to complete it with you there, but just wanted to give you the, the flow. So screw this bolt in first, right, the bottom one. Then you want to go like this. Take your tensioner, right, push it all the way over. I mean, uh, the back guy slide that in the groove right there so now it's lined up right screw your second bolt in so that's how you do it and then we're gonna get those at uh these are 12 newton meters also all right so this is the original top chain guide this is the uh, aftermarket one and they are very different they bolt up the same, but they're very different in shape. So I'm going to stick with the original one. It's a shame. Yeah. So we want to get these two back bolts back out. Remember the long ones in the back, the short ones in the front. Tighten those back up, they're going to be 22 Newton meters. Okay, that's 22 Newton meters. So everything is set. You know, you double check your timing marks, make sure you feel confident with how things are. And we're going to go ahead and snip them, snip things away. Detention this, pull the pin out. That's the pin, it, com it comes with this pin. Uh, pull that out. We're going to cut this. Everything's lined up. It's in the groove right here. It's in the groove right here. And that's it. Our, it's our timing for our time and chain. And there's a breath of fresh air. I feel so relieved. This crank position back. It's like a tone ring or something like that. It has an outside mark. Make sure that is on the outside. And you know, so now we're gonna put the uh, side pan, side engine side cover on, but you gotta kind of rehearse this because it's time sensitive, you know? Rehearse how you're gonna put it in. Make sure you have everything lined up. All the bolts you need just to catch it because uh, it's, uh, you're gonna have to put some RTV on there. So, uh, yeah, let's... Uh, we're going to use Honda Bond number four. And there are some specific places on this cover you want to put this RTV. So...
if you didn't pull off the oil pan to do this, the piston on the rings, you would have to put some RTV down here also. But I'm not putting any down here yet because I'll put this on first, then the RTV. There's a gasket here, a new gasket. So don't forget to put that in. So right here, there's one more bolt right there. Don't get it confused with that one. This one, it said one extra bolt for the side cover. So put that one in. Let's put this uh, sensor back and it has this uh, bolt. Strange one. That's the one that fits in there. it just gotta line up the holes and tighten it down so this sensor here it's a real pain in the butt can you see yeah that right there right there. to get it out right and I just noticed something right here you can stick a screwdriver in right there. So you can see that. It's right there. You just push it right out. You know what I mean? So, in case you're doing this and you're watching the whole video, all the videos, that's, the, that's, that's your secret right there. So, just get a screwdriver, something long, you know, uh, pry bar. Right, just go in here like that. Sorry. Go in here like that, and you can just push it right out. Okay? I wish I had known. We gotta put the uh, Honda Bond RTV now on, and uh, I'm sorry, this liquid gasket on. And you wanna do the same thing because you have to get this timing right. You don't have a lot of time, you know? You wanna rehearse it, so. I went underneath the car, put the uh, pan up like I'm gonna do it without the gasket on there. I have my bolts, or my socket, everything's ready. So I can just go ahead and screw it in. So let's go ahead and put the uh, liquid gasket on. I wish it had a little nozzle, you know? Yeah. So there we have it. Oil pan's in. You see why I waited? Because uh, that oil pan will seal the bottom of the cover. So we have uh, to do this in three passes. See the subframe is just hanging down. It's hanging on by two bolts, one in the back, one in the back on both sides. Just loosen them, don't take them all the way out. Just let the frame hang down. And there you go. So we're gonna do those, uh, tighten that up in three passes. And we're gonna do uh, we'll do uh, 5 newton meters, 10 newton meters, and then 12 newton meters. That's the last, um, the final torque specs for the oil. Forgot to mention one more thing. You want to do this in a crisscross pattern. I'll show you the pattern on the screen, but uh, this is going to be uh, bolt number one right here. And then you go two back there, and then three over here. And then four over there, and then five, six, you know? Just keep going out, out, out. Nothing makes a man more confident in a perfect seal like when he sees excess liquid gasket. All right, let's install this torque converter cover. 
That's going to be 12 newton meters. That's going to be three. Three bolts, 12 newton meters. So I'm going to install the new bolt, oil bolt, 17 millimeter. We need a, well, now you can do it because there's no oil filter here, but previous people tried to do this without a 17 millimeter wrench. They just ruined things. So get a 17 millimeter. Got a new oil filter. So let's talk about where we are. It's been 17 hours since uh, I've installed the subframe and the uh, and this here. That uh, is a bit of a doozy. Let's talk about it. Okay, so right now we're looking back towards the car. Let's just help you with your orientation. Uh, we have. Let me adjust myself, actually. Okay, so these uh, bolts here, right, there's, there's six of them. There's two that hold the bracket onto the uh, oil pan. So you wanna go ahead and install those first, right? Okay, so once those are installed, don't install these two right here. Just keep them out of the picture for now. You wanna go ahead and install, again, This is uh, these are 44 Newton meters. All four of those, and these two are also 44 newton meters. Okay, so you install the subframe bolts like that one. There's another one over here. Over there. And there's another one right here. The that one, and then this one here. That one's these are all the longer ones, right? These are gonna be the medium length ones. Medium length. And then you have an access hole right uh, here. See so right here? There's an access hole. That's going to have the uh, short bolts. Access hole is going to be right here. And then you go up. They're all the same size, 17 millimeters, right? And they're going to be um, uh, 103 newton meters. So. 103 newton meters, get them all tightened down, right? Okay, so once they're all down, subframes in position. The next thing we want to worry about is uh, these bolts here. So they are, you gotta line them up. It's really hard to line up. So you gotta put a jack right here. And once your jack is right here, then you're going to be able to pivot the engine in the right angle so these two will line up. Okay, so that's the order to get that in. And you know, have, we have a new oil pan bolt and a oil filter. Look right here. I'm noticing that there is a leak somewhere. I'm not really sure where, but there is, it's leaking in somewhere. I don't know what it is. It's oil or transmission fluid. Most likely it's transmission fluid from its location, but at this point, we can't address it yet, so we'll get around to it. Hopefully, it's not too severe, but we'll figure it out. I want to point out something that's pretty stupid of me. All right, see the uh, AC compressor right here? So the pulley is resting on the frame, the subframe right here. This is really bad. Uh, the engine side mount is, is, is off, remember? And this is a problem, so there's something else that you should do. You should put a piece of block of wood right here, a two by four in between this. I'm gonna do it. So this is what I was talking about. That's how I protect the AC compressor. So do that from the very, 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 very beginning. We need to get this bracket back in. Remember the bolts? So we have medium, medium, short, long, medium. It sits like this. It's down here on the side of the uh, engine cover that we put back on. So let's go ahead and put that on. So we had a really interesting problem. So this bolt here. Yeah. This. The medium one. For down here. So you can see it. Yeah. Okay. I can't 
can't get a straight shot to shoot that in. And the reason why it's uh, sorry, the reason why it's because the uh, the engine I can't push up anymore. I can't push up anymore because that engine mount underneath that I attached that I showed you earlier gotta disconnect it just so I can lift the engine up just like two inches or so more so I can slide that bolt in so yeah all right so that's the order of things now see we can get the bolt in see that so that's the sequence of order don't put that engine mount in until you uh, get the side mount on first at least the bracket in. so this bolt here the medium one all the way in the front the bottom here, it's, the threads are completely stripped out. I went to torque it, I heard snap, and that was the end of it. So, this is the second bolt of uh, installed that have uh, not been able to torque properly. The one, there's one on the uh, side cover in the back over there that also just like stripped right out. See the shenanigans I gotta do? I gotta strap around the uh, subframe and then around the AC compressor. See that gap right there? Right here. I need to close that gap so I can put the bolt in. All right, so cranking down. There you go. See, so there's always something that's like holding it up. I don't know what it is, but either way, see that gap is closed up now. So these are the kind of things you got to prepare for, for, for this. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, these are going to be a part of another project in the future. You'll see. Boom, boom. Two wheels. I need to do a couple things to prepare uh, for this crank bolt to be put back in. Uh, so this bolt needs to be cleaned. So we clean a couple. Brake parts cleaner crank also. Blow that off. Just gonna blow off the harmonic balancer here. Okay. We need to put some oil on the threads. Then we get to put some oil <clears throat> So now the bolt's ready. All right. Now this passage area here. You know what we're gonna do? Let's oil this a little bit so that way it kind of slides in without any, without any issue. So it takes some motor oil. Let's rub it around. If you look right here, see that? So that mark there, that mark there is lined up with that arrow right there. It's spot on. So we're good. All right, so we got our specialty tool installed. Uh, here, I'll show you. So you go like this slide it in it's this thing here with a half inch on it I'll put a link to it for you I have it jammed against the ground this on the ground this is set to 49 Newton meters so 49 Newton meters let's go for it It's 
49 newton meters. Feels kind of wimpy, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, so then after you've done that, we're gonna go 90 degrees more. So to do that, I'd rather put some thread locker on there to be honest with it, but whatever. Following the manual, what the suggestion says from the manufacturer, I guess. This is too funny. So I finally got some leverage here, right? This room I can turn. I had to come in from this side, this way, turn up a little bit. Uh, let's see if we can get a little bit more out of it. Coming down to get to 90. This back to top dead center on the compression stroke. So we get to turn back counterclockwise a little bit. I'm gonna go check up top and see what we're Alright, so we're gonna do the uh, valve clearances. So it's a space right here. And uh, on the intake side, which is this side here, we have twice as many valves. As the exhaust side and um, did I said that right no I don't think I said that right um, yeah we just have a uh, same amount either way um, we got two sizes uh, on this on the intake side we're gonna have it be about 23 um, millimeters, 0.23 millimeters, or uh, point, uh, uh, nine thousandths of an inch clearance. So we're gonna slide that in here and see what we got. So this is nine thousandths. It's a little tight, right? But not too bad. It's actually pretty good. Yeah, well, we can loosen it up a little bit because it's not a lot of drag. So to do that, you need a 10 millimeter wrench and a flathead. It's already, it's already pretty loose actually. So. This, remember, this has to be top dead center on the compression stroke. So. Down. This is going to be 20 newton meters all the way across on the intake side. Let's double check. Perfect. Lay perfect. Perfect. This torque spec here. I don't like the 20 on this one. Feels like it's gonna damage this. Okay, that's it. All right, so we'll do the same thing for the others. You know what? Even better. Let's go to the uh, exhaust side. So the exhaust side, right? It's gonna be 12 thousandths of an inch, or 30.30 millimeters. So three tenths a millimeter. Study. Tighten that up, there you go. Double check. Perfect. And we're gonna to torque this down to uh, 
13 newton meters. There you go. That's it. We'll do the same thing for this side. Right now, this is uh, top dead center on the compression stroke. Right. Every 180 degree turn is going to be equivalent to 90 degrees on the cam up top. We need to turn this 180 degrees right now, clockwise. So now we have to go adjust the valves on cylinder number, oops, I gotta double check. All right, so this is about 180 degrees. We're gonna double check up top. And this is gonna, we're gonna go to the cylinder number three. And after three, we're gonna go to four. The infamous four all the way at the end, Pat driver's side America, and then we're gonna go to number two. That's the order we're gonna do this. So that white paint mark right there. Right, that's gonna that went from here where it was at 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock. That's how you know you're uh, ready to adjust uh, cylinder number three, which is gonna be this one right here. So one, two, three. So let's go ahead and do the same thing to this cylinder now. Okay. <clears throat> On the right. Um, cylinder you see the lobe right here you saw this points inward towards the cylinder tube to the spark plug tube and this one points inward so that's how you know and you see how these are not this one's like down that one's up this is down that's up that one's down so that's how you know you're in the right position that's pointing inwards towards the spark plug tube, and this is pointing inwards towards the spark plug. Right, so we're uh, <clears throat> gonna get some harness back into position. So this is all kinds of. Hmm. This is here, injectors here. This, these, so we have what? Uh, one, two, three, four, five things to connect. All back here. Alright, so <clears throat> the green and the gray, these two are going to go right back here. Can't mess it up because of the shape. And then this tab goes into the back of the. Uh, metal shield, heat shield right here. We have, <clears throat> now we have three plugs left. Blue, the one with the rubber boot, and another blue. So let's find those. They're down there somewhere around the back here. That one's right here on the side. So let's get that one in. going to be the smaller blue one. Yeah. Come on. Okay, so that's plugged in right here. Smaller blue one. We got to go down underneath. Remember the uh, weird poofy oh. One with the boot on it, that one there. So that goes right here. So they get the orientation right. There you have it. Crank position sensor plugged in. That was the last one, and the other one up there. That's also plugged in. Oh, right there.